Welcome to Xara Template Tutorials with the Xara Web Designer 365 Premium Software. This is lesson number two and in this lesson we're going to be talking about the new parallax feature. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is go to your toolbar and click on the rectangle tool and we're going to go ahead and draw two rectangles in our workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and drag on that rectangle to create a second one and I'm going to change the color of the second rectangle. Okay, so once you have two rectangles in your workspace, the next thing that we want to do is right click on one of these rectangles. In this case, I'm going to right click on the lighter one and I'm going to go to web animation and that's going to bring up the web animations properties dialog menu and we're going to click on the reveal and scroll tab. Now under this tab, we're going to actually ignore the first sentence which says a reveal animation runs when the object comes into view in the browser window. In this case, we don't want to deal with that. We want to deal with the other component. So let's read that. A scroll animation makes the object animate as the page is scrolled. In other words, as the page is being scrolled by an end user or, for example, a visitor to your website, the animation is going to be dictated or controlled by the speed at which the page is scrolled. So there's a direct correlation between the speed at which the object will animate and the speed at which the person who's on your website scrolls your web page. So let's read the next part of this. The parallax scroll animation makes the object scroll at a slower rate to all your other page content. So when you're scrolling through that page, your standard page content is going to scroll at a similar rate in relationship to the speed at which the person scrolls your web page. But the parallax effect is going to slow down the objects that you apply it to in comparison to your standard page content. So in other words, as that person scrolls through your web page, certain objects are going to scroll slower in relationship to your end user scrolling through your web page and the standard page content is going to scroll at a normal rate in relationship to how fast they scroll through your web page. So let's go ahead and click on the scroll radio box here and then under the animation uh, tab here we're going to click on the drop down menu and we're going to click on the parallax option and once you click on the parallax option to the right of that we can control the speed at which the animation will be applied in this case the speed at which the rectangle will scroll in relationship to how fast a person scrolls through your web page. The further to the left the slower the object will scroll in relationship to scrolling through the web page. The further to the right the faster the object is going to scroll in relationship to using the scroll bar in your web page. So let's go ahead and set the gray rectangle to about the midpoint for its scroll speed okay and that's going to give it a somewhat faster scroll speed for the parallax effect and then let's go ahead and click the apply key and then let's select the darker rectangle here and then let's set it to scroll animation and then set it to parallax and this time we're going to set it all the way to the right okay and this should make the object scroll at a similar speed or the exact same speed as your standard page content so let's go ahead and hit the apply key and then hit OK. And now we're going to go to our toolbar again and select the text tool. And we're going to create some text to the right side of this darker rectangle. In this case, I'm going to write parallax effect. OK, and we're going to have that text sitting right to the right of that. So let's go ahead and hit the F5 key. And now if we scroll through this web page, we're going to see how this parallax effect works. So if I scroll downward, you're going to see that the darker rectangle will go faster than the lighter rectangle because we set the darker rectangle to scroll at a faster rate in relationship to scrolling through the website. So if we scroll down, you'll see that the darker rectangle is faster, okay, as scrolling out of view on the web page. Even though it's further down than the, the lighter rectangle, it still goes out of sight faster than the lighter rectangle and the lighter rectangle scrolls at a much slower rate okay so when you look at this it kinda creates a lively look when you scroll through the web page so let's just look at this one more time 
and you can see that it kind of brings the page to life when we do that so let's go ahead and close this out and now I'm going to go to an example that I created for you to see what this would look like when you apply it to a background so now you're looking at one of the examples that I have let's go ahead and hit the F5 key and now you can see the example that I created in this case I applied the parallax effect to the great benefits text and I also applied it to the text that's beneath that as well as the background photo so let's see what this looks like you'll see that as I'm scrolling down the text that's under great benefits scrolls at a faster rate than the text above it okay so the text beneath great benefits scrolls at a faster rate okay than the word great benefits and you can see that the background photo also scrolls at a slightly different rate and this kind of brings the background to life as well as the text as well okay and it kind of just makes the site look a little bit more lively okay so hopefully you can see what this looks like when I'm scrolling through the web page and hopefully it looks a little bit more lively I'm gonna go back to my uh, web page and I'm gonna actually make uh, the white rectangle I have here a little bit smaller so that you can see what will happen if you don't set things properly when you apply the parallax effect in certain situations so I've made the white rectangle that I have here oh, you can't probably see it so I'll move it a little bit but this rec rectangle is going to be smaller now in terms of its vertical height okay and if I hit F5 now and preview this and then I scroll to the bottom of our web page you're going to see that the photo appears again and this is because this photo hasn't went out of view yet in terms of the speed that we set for the parallax effect so it's important that you cover up the photo until it's fully out of view when using the parallax effect okay so since it's not out of view what we need to do is we need to stretch this rectangle to be taller to cover up that photo in this case I've placed the rectangle to be on top of the photo within my layers okay and if you look in the page and layer gallery here you'll see that this rectangle is above this photo so if I select the photo and I go to the page background you'll see that the photo is highlighted with a, a darker blue behind it so if I select the right rectangle you'll see that it's on the mouse off layer If I select the the photo it's on the page background layer okay so when I scroll through this white rectangle is going to cover over that okay so hopefully that makes sense but if we have this set to a longer distance and I hit F5 to preview it again you'll see that if I scroll down now you will no longer see the photo slipping under that white rectangle okay now if you want to create that kind of effect where the photo reappears again you could do that but that's totally up to you but in most cases I'm assuming that you don't want that photo to appear a second time okay so hopefully this was effective in showing you how to use the parallax effect and hopefully you understand the basic foundation of how it works because I think that is the key to really applying your own unique parallax effect because you don't have to go with a specific style or approach you can kind of take your own approach with it to create the effect that you want but at the most basic level you need to understand that the parallax effect controls the direct relationship to how fast a user scrolls through your web page in terms of how fast the object will scroll out of view okay so if this video was helpful don't forget to embed comment share and subscribe and stay tuned for future tutorials